So I set it over here on the table and just look at all this metal, man. I've got some serious problems in this transmission, more than what it sounded like. It just sounded like some, it, all it was doing was it was grinding. Not even grinding, more like a, a rattling, rolling sound in, in neutral and park. But when you put it in drive, everything was okay. As soon as it goes into drive, it goes away. That's a very nasty sound, and that is inside the transmission. All right, so continuing along here, we're going to remove the uh, speed sensors. So this is an 8 millimeter. you got two bolts that hold it in. And the next thing to do before you can pull the speed sensor off is you have to unplug it. So you push this down like with a flathead or something, or even with a finger perhaps, and pull it out. Alright, so then once you get those off, you want to take off the two bolts right here that are 10 millimeter. And lift this out, get out that cavity there, and pull on this up. There we go. Push it to the side, not up. See that? goes to the side. Now we first take off the two eights over here, which the A might is supposed to have been tens. Now look, it's very easy to get these eight millimeter and 10 millimeter bolts confused. There's so many different ones and so many different locations they can go in. So please pay extra attention to these bolts and not mixing them up. But these ones come out first. Those two are just to be aligned to tech them. And then there should be should be six 10 millimeter bolts up here, or four more. Those out. And the tech them. These. Alright, so next we take the seven millimeter bolts out. Holding the Tecum. Tecum comes free. So next I'm going to remove my detent spring. So based on these figures in the manual, I believe the check balls are going to sit in the upper valve body because they sit in here like this. And then the upper valve body has this tab on it which is right there. And the lower valve body doesn't. It has a it has a tab going out to the side like that. So, if that's the case, my check balls are gonna be on this side. So after I take the screws out, I'm gonna flip it and take it apart then. All right, take the rest of them out. This is seven millimeter. You can actually pull this out if you like, or you can leave it. Part now. Flip it. All right. Ah, no, we got more over here. All right. Now it should come apart. It does. And the check balls are, should be down there. And there's a lot of metal in here. We'll check those out here in a little bit. Bounce. Lift up the spacer plate. Alright, let's see. Check ball location and function. One, two, three. Got one there. Should have one there. And we got two. Yeah, there it is. One, two, right there. All right, so I got all seven check balls. That's good, it's real good. All right, there's my seven check balls, and they're fairly new, so you're not gonna see any wear on these. They look, uh, they look pretty good to me. All right, so I'm gonna set these in this big tub. Try to drain a little bit, take some mineral spirits. Do that a little bit. Or you could lay them flat. Four mineral spirits in it 
and that'll and then you can drain it a little easier probably. Spray bottle works good too. You got a spray bottle, you can spray these all out. Get it in there mixed real good with all the transmission fluid in there. And then when you put it, turn it up on the side and drain it. Most of it will come out and drain okay. Better than what it was at least. Got a lot of metal over here. See that? This arrow thing. It's been damaged. It's those damn uh, front planetary gears. I got one, I just gotta go get it. It's in my storage. Unit. It's like an hour and a half away. But I'll get it here in the next day or two. So I can blow all this stuff out. Yeah, you gotta have compressed air, man, like really. Because if you don't, this will never work. You just it's one of those things that you kinda gotta have. You gotta have it. If you don't have a compressor, get one. Buy one from somebody on Facebook or offer up for a few bucks. Thirty bucks. I think the one I got cost me thirty bucks. Really cheap. I don't want the check balls to fall out, so figure out which one they're sitting in. Alright, so back over here it looks like None of my valves are stuck, but I do feel a little bit of, of abrasiveness in them. They're, they're not very smooth. I think it's, they're not that bad, like, but this one I can feel it's like raspy feeling. I didn't run it for very long after I heard that noise, but uh, I'm not surprised that maybe a little metal got in there. But you want to check all your valves, make sure none of them are stuck. None of these really should be. Because I just did this not too long ago. So looking at my spacer plate here, I've got fine metal right there. It is recommended to replace your spacer plate, but I have not replaced mine in any of my rebuilds yet. Alright, so to clean all my, my, my valves, my parts, all my parts, I just like I said, I use mineral spirits, a brush is good. And I usually also use an air compressor. So I got my compressor. I'm just waiting on the hose to get here tomorrow. So I use this big tub. I got it from a, from a Chili's a while back. And I'm gonna take my little brush here and some you know, fairly clean mineral spirits. And I'm gonna get all inside of all these little 
little spot, little grooves. If you see it down in there, I see you've got some red down there. So I'm gonna get this in there very well in all the little little channels to try to get out all the contamination, all the little bit of metal that could be in there. Now we wanna do that with both halves of the valve body and then blow it out with, with compressed air. Try to get the brush deep in some of those little, little channels. And then you can reuse your mineral spirits later for something else, like I'm gonna clean the case or something. You can reuse it a few times before you, you need to throw it away. Get something like a tube brush and uh, go down in the bores. Well, it looks like the mineral spirits got everywhere that there was transmission fluid. I think. So, now I'm going to take my compressed air, blow it out.
right, so now I'm gonna work on the upper valve body half. I'm gonna take out all the valves and check them out and clean it. So, starting with the one up there, which is 325 and 324, and there's actuator feed limit. Got it out. Like I said, on the other part, just take a tube brush, start cleaning. See how dirty it comes out on the other side? these ones you can use the tube brush as well it works it's really not a lot to get here but you want to scrub all of it that way you don't got any any contamination anywhere here and dry them off a little and then see I ran out of Ziploc bags or I'm almost out I got four left so I got this tray top set up to put some of my parts and then I label it the, the uh, part number in the book just like I do on the bags. That way I know which one's which, which one goes where. See here I got, that's for the other half. And then I got the rest of them, three other bags up here. So I know which ones are which. So I'm gonna do that with each of the valves on this upper half. Looks like there's seven more. So I got all this marked for all the valves I'm taking out. And I like to use something like this. Seems to work fine. You see we've got the spring right there. So it moves that way. So let's push back on the stop. That falls out. Don't let these fly away anywhere. they do kind of work it out And the valves should, they shouldn't just fall out. If they're, they make good seals, then they will be in there kind of, kind of tight to where when you turn them upside down, the valve body, they don't just fall out, see? Spring might, but not the valve. And this one's not, I don't see really anywhere on this one. So that's good, we don't really wanna see where. And for some reason, these little end plates, they love to get and collect, I don't know, metal, dirt, they get really dirty. So you wanna clean them all really good. Clean the edges, let's see. Especially in there, that little in, that little inside edge. Yeah. You 
just want everything clean, that's all. This is the number 330, which is first reverse and 456 clutch boost valve spring. There's a little bit of wear on it, but not too much. I'm going to replace all these valves later. I'm going to do a shift kit or whatever all that stuff Sonax sells is, or by Transco. That's the plan. I'm just not doing it today because i got to get this vehicle running again because we're going to be having a baby on September 15th. And then to start getting these these things out, you can start pushing from this side. And just find little pangs there. Push it down a little bit, but not too far. Just enough to really be able to grab it. Hold your finger over this so it don't fly away. Probably won't, but. kind of work it out wherever you can find something to grab onto on the valve just keep looking through little different channels here and different little little spots pop up It looks like this is going to be two pieces. This is 331 through 334, two six clutch regulator valve and spring. The first piece, and make sure it don't fall out. That means we got a, a decent seal between the valve and the valve bore. Better than if it was falling out, at least. Four pieces. Five. Five pieces. I don't see really any severe wear on it. Looks all right. All right to me. So, take, rebuilding a transmission takes several hours, if not days, especially when you don't do it all the time. I only rebuild my stuff because I would rather do things right and trust myself than to take it to somebody I don't know and trust. Now, if I, if I had a good transmission guy that I could trust, well, that'd be different, but I don't. This is three. This is the regulator two six clutch regulator valve gain valve. A 
little bit of wear. You can see the scratches on the valve. But again, nothing too severe. I do wish I could afford to replace it right now, but I can't. I can't do it right now. I'm already taking enough time off of work to do this project myself. As most of you know, this isn't my day job. I'm a technician for refrigeration. During the days and weekends, nights, whenever I'm on call, when I see these things, like I said, they get dirty. I don't know why. But they attract a lot of the mess see so you want to especially get on those inside lips those inside ledges because there you go you want it to be clean and see how that's working out for me something to do also you come when you come across the ones that have a spring in them you can feel that there's a lot of spring pressure on it it doesn't feel like this one has too much, but before you pull this out, stick a, a Phillips head like this right here, and it's, it's, it'll catch the spring from flying away. Okay. Looks good, not falling out. This one is the 3.5 reverse clutch boost valve. kind of okay not too bad if they're worn out you'll see uh, this coloration like right there you can see the aluminum on the thin part of the stem for the valve turn them like this and if you see anything making a revolution it's usually an indication to look somewhere The springs get dirty too. See how the brush is white over here, but over here it's not quite so white. That's why it's good to use a tube brush. Scrub it. Dunk it back in there again. Take a little Phillips like that, or a little tool, whatever. Wrap a towel around it and go. Well, it was a good idea, I thought. Or like so. Clean the, uh, clean the sleeve. Maybe just take your pick. Yeah. There, that works. Yeah, look at all that filth. Just coming off the inside ledge. This one is the 3.5 reverse clutch regulator valve, and this one has some wear. You can see that these are a little lighter in color than the stem, and then when you turn it, So on the middle, we've got some somewhere. On the end, we've got somewhere. And also right here. So it's more wear than I like to see, but it's, it didn't fall out of the bore, so I guess I should be happy about that. And 
And this one is the one, two, three, four clutch regulator valve. So this one's got a little more wear than the last one, the 35R. Where was it? It's really hard to see. I don't know if the camera is going to pick it up, but I can see it. One more. This one is the boost valve. One, two, three, four boost valve. And this one's got the spring at the end. Push it some. Like that. Like this, put it there. Catch my spring. Oh, shit. Gotta clean these up. Put them over there. See how dirty that shit is? Hmm. Like I said, I don't know why these things get so dirty and the other things aren't nearly as dirty. In fact, these attract the, the metal or the dirtiness or whatever. Dirt. Okay. One, two, three, four, boost valve. This one again, about the same. A little bit of wear, not too much. Didn't fall out of the bore. All right, got all the valves out. You can see, got them all set up here. So I know what is what. Clean out the valve body now. Just like I did the other one. You can see all the little pieces of metal that came out of the valves, springs, and that's a lot. Gotta get all that out. Right, so clean the valve body and spray. Get that mineral spirits in there. Get it nice and wet. Saturated. And take your, your brush. Make sure it's reasonably clean. And get all in there. You want to get the bores. Two brush, perhaps. As best as you can, at least. That way, that way stuff comes out. Okay. Rub the bores. Take your 
soft bristled, bristled hand brush. Get everything moving around in there so that you get a good rinse and air dry with the air compressor. If you don't get some fluid in there and you don't stir it around, the mineral spirits might not come out. down in there. Okay. okay. And then put put you on some glasses if you don't want to get Stream helps good too for uh, if you don't stir it up with the brush. This is probably a little overkill, but I don't want to clean. That was good. Pretty damn good. Now we can blow it out with some compressed air and it'll be ready. All right, so moving on, I got my spacer plate here. Just gonna kind of clean it. So I've got this Tecum filter. Now they say to replace this every time you take it off. I'm sure that's a good idea. But these things are 20 bucks each unless you buy an overhaul kit every time you take it apart. Which maybe you should. I don't know. But I see no reason why this one can't be reused. It's not original to the vehicle. I replaced it. 
when I rebuilt it last time. You see the dirt coming off the edge. And then for shits and giggles, I think it's a good idea to measure all of the check, hole, check ball holes to make sure that, uh, that they're not excessively worn. I don't think they are. I believe the check balls are 0.25 of an inch, a quarter inch. So the holes should all be a little bit smaller. One, and you can find the check ball holes by finding the holes that are next to each other like this. So you've got a pair there, two, another one there, 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 there. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And if this one here has a big circle on it, then it's eight. But that's on, the, I think, the 2013 or 2014 and newer. I don't know, I'm not a transmission guy. But just check all the holes. I'm getting about 17, 0.7, 0 0.17 of an inch, whatever that is, 17 thousandths. No, yeah, I think. Mm -hmm. Point, no, 170 thousandths. Yeah, there we go. It's been a long time since I was in math class. Yep, and then just check out the, the ceiling surface, which is going to be on this side. You'll, you'll be able to tell because there'll be a little bit of a, you'll be able to see that it's kind of rounded. Let me see if I can find a good one here. Like this one here. You can see that the, that, that edge, it's, instead of being straight up, it's kind of at a 45 degree angle. That's where the check ball seats. So just make sure that there's nothing really wrong with those. And they look all right. I don't like how this one here doesn't uh, have like a, a diagonal or, or it's, it's like this is a sharp corner instead of this one. I, I don't really like that very much. I'm not sure what I could do about it, but I would rather it look more evenly around. Okay, so before I lose all these, I'm going to go ahead and put them back in the upper valve body according to this manual, this one. All right, so first one, 325, 323, oh, hold on, first I got to... I gotta blow this out. Yeah, because I didn't. Well, it looks pretty dry, actually. Alright, now we're gonna put back together the upper valve body according to this page, page 83. Just to lubricate the valve and put some fluid on it. And we're gonna put it in. It should fit nice and tight like that. This spring's kind of tough, so you gotta 
do what you gotta do until you can get it in. Got it. Then once it's in, make sure that you can, that it moves back and forth in the bore. So you start, you move it towards the spring. It moves nice. All right, then once they're all in, you just wanna check them out. Make sure that they move in the bore nicely and clean. Like they feel nice. I remember. They didn't really feel so good when I was uh, testing them when I pulled it out. So make sure you always move it towards the spring. I'm trying to get some good light in here, maybe like that. Yeah, move it towards the spring. So like that, this one, like that, this one. That. This one. That. This one. That. This one. That. And then the last one. Still moves good. Next on the valve body, check balls. These check balls are still in good shape. I'm gonna make sure definitely not to lose them. But you just wanna clean them up a little. Mineral spirits, yeah. Okay. Get your little towel. Clean them up, check them out. Sometimes one of the balls is, the white ones, they, get, they, they shrink. And you don't want that. I had to replace them the last time I rebuilt it. Number four. I think my camera's dirty. Clean it real quick. Let's see how that looks. Number five. Six. Number seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven check balls. Double check the check ball location. Check balls are in. Spacer plate. You gotta locate this dowel and this dowel, and you put them on with the dowels. See? Then you're gonna set the upper valve body aside. And go 
look on the lower valve body now. So I'm going to do the same thing with the lower valve body, put them all together. I've got them all here. And then I'm not going to film that. Okay, while the valve's in, we got the upper valve body. All right, got all the valves in. Now the upper body is on the lower body. According to this, once you put them together, flip, them up, flip it over, and then you install the 12 upper valve body to lower valve body body bolts in that sequence to 71 inch pounds of torque. So I got them here. I'm gonna set my drill to the lowest possible torque. And I'm gonna put them in using this chart as reference. Yeah, I guess. It's coming together though. Yeah. All right, so we'll set this on seventy one inch pounds. Seventy Okay, seventy one. Right. Next we install the Tecum. We got the filter plate and gasket on there. A little bit of grease on it. A little bit. Help it seal, hopefully. Okay. go on there just like that according to the instructions here we've got to do the two bolts on the side first it's going to be these two and they have the eight millimeter heads start them off 
and tighten only at this time. After those two are installed, it says to install the nine 55 millimeter valve body bolts in the location shown in 147. That's 147. 55s are the one on the top right and the ones on the left. After that, you install the six 45 millimeter heads, which have to be those ones with the 10 millimeter head. But they got it all messed up here because, mm, let me see. Yeah, they got it all messed up because they, they it don't say that over here on the bolt chart. It doesn't. It says that it's got a seven millimeter head, and that ain't right. That ain't right at all. All right. So once you get your Tecum on, you're gonna have six 10 millimeter bolts. One of them goes on there, and the other four go on here. Two, three, four, one there. Then you gotta put your manual valve on and your other 10 millimeter goes here on the on that one. Then after that, you only got these ones left for the Tecum. Okay, so now after all these are in, they've all been hand tightened. You can uh, tighten them all in the sequence shown. So that's what I'm gonna that's what I'm gonna do here. And in doing this, it's kind of crazy. You got to go between eight millimeter, seven millimeter, and ten millimeter like back and forth. It's crazy, but I'm gonna do that. Okay. After you get everything torqued down in sequence, you plug this in, and then you snap this clip. Snaps with that right into there. <laughs> 